Hey guys, Maggie here from Living to Rome with a tutorial on how to get digital marketing clients online, even as a complete beginner with no experience. I have had over 8,000 students through my online courses, so I know very well where people get stuck in building a really successful digital marketing business online, and that is usually just getting their very first client. So in this tutorial, you're gonna see my exact step-by-step -step process of how to find and pitch warm clients online. So there's no cold calling there necessary in this approach. And before we get into it, I do also just want to say as you're out there pitching, please remember that people will work with you because of who you are as much as what you can actually do for them. That personal connection is so, so important, especially for small business owners and entrepreneurs because they might have 30 people who can do their Facebook ads and post on Instagram for them but you might be the only person who's gonna appreciate their love of trashy TV shows or sausage dogs or whatever their thing might be. So make sure to focus on finding common ground with your clients before they're even your clients. And that is gonna really lead to a successful approach in building your online business. And if you stay till the end, I'm actually gonna break down exactly what I did in my pitch that is catered specifically to beginners pitching clients that you can then use for yourself and replicate and use again and again to grow your online business. And of course, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every single time a new video goes live. All right, and now let's dive straight into how to get digital marketing clients even if you're a complete beginner with no experience. So this approach can work no matter how you're reaching out to potential clients, whether you're doing cold outreach to emails or LinkedIn or social media, but I'm going to be showing you how to do this in a bit of a warmer lead sort of way through Facebook groups that are basically clients that are already looking for someone with my skill set and it's my job just to convince them that I'm the right person for the job. So this is one of my all time favorite Facebook groups for this kind of outreach because it is a community of awesome female entrepreneurs and business owners and they're quite global, largely Australia based, but very global. And a lot of female entrepreneurs and business owners will often come in here asking for help with their social media and their marketing. So don't let the name deceive you. A lot of these Facebook groups are just communities for people seeking advice and exchanging helpful tips, which makes it a perfect place for someone like me who might be able to offer some advice in this area. So I don't want to actually manually filter through all the conversations and threads. It can be quite time consuming. You want to use a search bar and I like starting with the phrase looking for. It's going to show up with a lot of different things, not just people looking for advice in terms of marketing strategy, but then it's your job just to kind of filter through and find the ones that are most relevant to your business. I would also recommend taking note of when they were posted and making sure they're relatively recent so you're not pitching someone who posted something two months ago. So this one's quite recent, it's only two days ago. It is someone who is looking for someone who's a blend of a business coach, marketing strategist, mentor, motivator, experience in private practice and psychology. That is totally my ball game. I can see myself fitting into that kind of business and adding a lot of value. So that's one that I would like to approach. And it's only got 16 comments on it, which is not a whole lot of competition. So I'm happy with that. And I would then go to Christine's Facebook profile to find out the name of the psychology business. So I can see even in her profile photo and over here that she is the principal psychologist and owner of Hargan Psychology. So I would find out a little bit more about Hargan Psychology. So first I would Google them. Also, I am in their local area, so I am uh, near Hawthorne, so I'm probably gonna be targeted by their Google Ads if they're doing local Google Ads, which is another benefit. Um, if you are using a VPN, you can actually fake it so that you are kind of looking up their local ads if you wanna go that step above and beyond, but it's totally fine if Google Ads are not your thing. It's just something that um, you might look at as are they doing something with their Google Ads and um, you can see that they are advertising for their actual business name, which is great, but it is quite limiting because most people won't be looking for the specific psychology office or the brand name. They'll be looking for the service. So it's important to also notice if they are advertising for their particular services. So they do couples therapy, family therapy, individual therapy. So then I could even um, type in couples therapy, let's say. 
Kirby and see if they actually come up. So it doesn't look like they're advertising for that particular service, or at least it's not coming up. Um, so that could be a conversation starter to say, cool, you're doing Google Ads, that's amazing. I would then use my Google Tag Assistant to check if they're tracking everything correctly on their website and my Pixel Helper to see if they're tracking everything correctly through their Facebook pixels if they're advertising on Facebook. And this is all kind of a conversation starter for, um, for my pitch. I would go to the Facebook ads library and again, put in the name of their business and see if they're advertising. Yep. Okay, cool. So they're doing Facebook ads and then I would check and see that they're actually not, um, they are not tracking Facebook ads. They're not tracking um, anything in terms of their website visitors through their Facebook ads pixel on their website. So then that's another conversation starter to say, cool, you're running Facebook ads, amazing, but you're not tracking it on your website currently. So this is how I would go about doing a bit of a mini audit prior to jumping on that video and also finding things that I really, really like about their business and also some of their competitors to then see how they might be able to use some of their strategies. So let's go ahead and jump on the call now. Hi, Christine. My name is Maggie Stara and I'm reaching out today because I saw your post in the Facebook group asking for a business coach, marketing strategist, mentor, and motivator, or perhaps someone who's a bit of a blend of all of these different areas. So I thought I would introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my background and also talk to you about your own online presence, some areas that really stood out to me in terms of your strengths and also some areas for improvement that I've identified. And then also maybe talk about how we can take the conversation further either through a Zoom call or the fact that I actually saw that you're based in Hawthorne. So we're only about 20 minutes away here in Richmond. So we could just grab a cup of coffee and have a bit more of a casual chat as well. But uh, my background, just to give you an idea of why I'm so passionate about your particular area of expertise, I graduated with a major in health studies and a minor in psychology in Canada back in 2012 is when I finished university, which is another lifetime ago. Um, and I'm obviously much more focused on the marketing field now, but I have aligned myself a lot with the health and wellness industry because of that background. So I'm quite confident in growing brands just like yours, and we can talk about that in greater detail another time. But for now, let's focus on you and your own online presence, because I know you're the principal psychologist and owner at Hargan Psychology, so I know you would be incredibly proud of the brand that you've grown and that know, like, and trust factor that's so key for your particular industry is so evident in everything in your online presence, from the color choices to the font choices to just the wording that you use in some of your posts. So I just want you to know that that presence definitely comes across and it's so incredibly powerful and there are just a few things that you've done that I think have kind of really, really stood out to me. So first of all, I can see that you're running Google ads already, which is amazing. It's very underrated for a lot of service-based businesses, especially local businesses. So it's really great to see that you are already running it and you're tracking it correctly on your website, which is great to see, but you are also just running your Google ads to your homepage at the moment. So if they are converting exactly as you want them to be, then no worries and no need to tweak anything. But with Google ads, sometimes with my clients, I like to experiment with having dedicated landing pages on their website that really kind of force that call to action that you want people to take and remove some of the distractions because you know that people who are looking for your services on Google already have a really high search intent. They're already looking for you and it's your job just to convince them that you're the right choice for what they're looking for. And sometimes people come to a website and get overwhelmed by all of the different areas of a website that they can browse through and then they kind of get so overwhelmed that they leave or they don't take the action that you want them to take. So sometimes it can be a really cool experiment to remove the menu, remove the social links, and create this dedicated one-page website almost that is just catered towards people booking 
a consultation and just giving them the pieces of information that you think that they're looking for and especially narrowing it down by your different service categories. So if people are looking specifically for couples therapy or specifically for family therapy, then making dedicated learning pages for those different services so that you're not trying to advertise everything to everyone because you already know exactly what they're looking for. So you're catering to their customer journey that way. Now, I did also see that you are running Facebook ads, which is amazing and again, really underutilized, especially in the service based industry. And it does look like you're um, likely doing really well with them. You're running quite a few different ads already, but I did notice that you're not actually tracking this on your website. So you don't have the Facebook tracking pixel on your website, which means that all the amazing visitors who probably have the highest of intentions to actually book a consultation or inquire further about your services who come through these ads, they maybe are just on the go. Maybe they're dropping their kids off at school or they're just you know, on their way to work and they're getting distracted. And by the time that they actually have the time and space and mental capacity to do something about that action that you want them to take, they've now forgotten about your brand, they can't really remember who you are, or maybe they just need a gentle reminder. And the Facebook pixel allows you to do just that. So it allows you to essentially track everyone who comes to your website, not just from these ads, but from other sources as well. So they might be coming from Google ads or just through organic search traffic and then target them on Facebook. The other benefit of this is that the conversions of those ads are actually so much cheaper because that no like and trust factor is so much higher. So these ads that you're currently running are likely targeted at cold audiences that don't really know much about you. You don't really know if they have a need for your services, but running those retargeting ads, you're essentially advertising to people who have already expressed an interest in your services. They already know a little bit about you. So converting them into a patient and into a consultation is going to be so much easier and cheaper in the long run as well. One other thing that I wanted to mention in the Facebook ads world is they're not a direct competitor of yours, geographically speaking, um, but they are in your space. This is Clear Health Psychology. They're based in WA. One really interesting thing that they're doing that I think you might be able to utilize is using the geographic language in their advertising. So they will say um, things like WA and Perth and... Um, looking for a psychologist in Perth metropolitan area. So it's very geographical based and these kind of ads have a tendency to convert really, really well because people know that you're specifically targeting their area. So because you're based in Hawthorne, you could be advertising for Richmond, for Hawthorne, basically anyone within the Melbourne area. And you could then also break that down by your different services. So you could be specifically advertising for family therapy in Melbourne based area and couples therapy within the Melbourne based area. And that can be really powerful because then people feel like you're talking to them specifically. It is a little bit of extra work for sure to setting up these types of ads. It's a lot easier to set up really generic ads that just advertise you as a business. But the more you can kind of understand what people are looking for when they're coming across your brand and when they're in that mindset to actually convert, the better your return on your investment will be in terms of advertising. So that's just something for you to think about there. One thing I absolutely have loved that I haven't actually seen much of in your space is the use of video. So I saw this on your LinkedIn that you use this video where people have a chance to get to know you specifically and this is so powerful in getting people to kind of see the person that they might be actually talking to and the person who built the brand and why they built the brand, connecting with your why, that's so powerful. And the fact that you then repurpose this video for your IGTV, I think is so, so cool. I think that is such a clever idea. And again, it's just kind of catering that video to a bit of a different audience on Instagram. One thing here that I would um, just kind of recommend to you in the future if you're ever doing this, it's literally maybe three, five minute job to just crop this video into the right dimensions for a mobile device. So you can use the exact same video and just crop it so that people on mobile devices can view the video in the format that it's intended for IGTV. That's literally the only thing. It's really, really quick, but it can actually increase your retention rates because people are more likely to engage with that video because it's purpose-built for that platform. 
But otherwise, absolutely amazing. Just the fact that you are utilizing video on Instagram puts you well above other people in your industry. And I'm so glad to see you using it. I think you have a beautiful presence online in all aspects and areas of your business. And I would love to talk to you more about how I might be able to help with my expertise and with my passion in your industry. So if you would like to take this chat further and book a Zoom call, or like I said, if you wanna just have a coffee somewhere in Hawthorne, I'd be happy to do that. Just use the button somewhere on this page that's gonna allow you to um, jump on a call with me. And I would love to hear more about your business and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks so much, Christine. So once the video is done, what you wanna do is just kind of adjust some of the elements that are going to help you really convert this into a paying client which would be just your settings over here on the actual call so um, this is where you can adjust things like are they able to leave comments are you going to get some email notifications are they able to use emojis is the thumbnail going to be um, an animated gif or is it just going to be a static image um, can they download the video? So this is one I like to leave toggled off because essentially I have now just given Christine a whole strategy about how to improve her business and I wouldn't want her passing that on to a different freelancer to implement for her. So this is one that I would just like for somebody to view and then for me to be able to archive it so that they're not able to kind of use that strategy with somebody else. And showing analytics to the viewer, probably not. And I would save that. Then you want to be able to edit the call to action. So my screen's being a bit funny right now, you can't actually see it, but there's a button up there that Christine would see on her screen that can say um, either book your call or book your call Christine. But in this case, I would just call it book your call because on mobile devices, it cuts off if it's a bit too long. So book your call is all good. I just adjusted it to be my brand colors. And then the link here, I um, just use a Calendly link that's linked to my Google Calendar. That's really, really easy for people to get all the details they need. So this is an example of how I've done that. So this is a 30 minute strategy call and um, all it is is um, just linked to my Zoom account here. So as soon as somebody books, they're gonna get a Zoom confirmation with all the details they need to jump onto a Zoom call. It's also got some questions in there for me to give me a bit of a frame of reference of what they're looking to get out of that call in terms of what are their biggest struggles what is their one biggest goal over the next six months with their business which again is just framing them into the mindset of actually working with me for the next six months so that's a little bit of a cool neat little psychology trick and then this is also just um, kind of giving me a frame of reference of what parts of their digital marketing are they already active in obviously these are not required the only thing that's required is their name and email so they can leave the rest blank but otherwise that's all there and everything else is pretty standard once they book in this is all calendly branded i'm just on the free version here so they can just book into 30 minute chunks um, in gaps that are free in my schedule this is my time zone here so it's going to convert to their time zone and as soon as they confirm that it's going to send them an email saying you're confirmed here are the details of the zoom call jump on at this time and it can also send them a reminder if you wish. So you can send them like a 30 minute reminder or a five minute reminder so that they remember to jump on and they can also cancel and reschedule and it is gonna automatically pop into their calendar. So that is a super, super easy way of doing that. Now that is the free version of Calendly but it is a paid version of Loom to be able to have this kind of call to action. On the free version, you can still do everything we just did, but instead of having the button there, all you would do is you would give them a bit of a follow-up inside of Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn, wherever you're reaching out, um, and just say, if you wanna book your call, book in with my Calendly here. So that's a bit of a workaround if you're not wanting to pay for the upgraded version of these softwares. So now in terms of next steps following this kind of video pitch, what you want to do is you want to copy that Loom link and send it to them via Facebook Messenger because you are interacting on Facebook, so you want to keep it on Facebook. And in that message, you also want to talk a little bit about who you are and why you're reaching out. 
then you want to pop into the Facebook group and actually comment on their comment to say, by the way, I privately messaged you, check your inbox because sometimes these things do get lost and then wait for the email notification to say they've viewed your video. That gives you an opportunity to check back in with them if they don't follow up to say, hey, I'm not sure if you've had a chance to view this video yet. You know that they've viewed the video, but you don't wanna be creepy about it. It's just a bit of a conversation prompt that way. So let's now talk about some things that I did in my pitch that you can take and replicate for your own freelance business. I introduced myself and the reason for the call and a little bit about my expertise, but it was a lot more about my actual background in studying psychology eight years ago in university than my recent marketing career. And that is great because a lot of beginners have so much knowledge that they can share with the client and so much advice they can provide to them, but they might not necessarily have the stats to back it up by saying, I grew this client's business by 400%, but it's not actually necessary because all of that knowledge shines through that call. I never said I was a digital marketing specialist or strategist, but the advice I was providing kind of showed that anyways. I then went through and complimented their business before providing constructive feedback on how they can improve. And I also quickly mentioned a competitor and how they can actually leverage some of the things that their competitors are doing to improve their own business. And I gave them a very clear call to action of how to take that business relationship and that working relationship forward with the next step to have a call. The reason this really works well for beginners is because it can be really intimidating to even think of a title for yourself. You might not feel confident pitching yourself as a digital marketing specialist when you haven't actually had a client yet. And you might not feel confident talking about past clients or your past experience when you don't have any yet. So instead, you can just use all the amazing knowledge you have to provide them with actionable tips for how to improve their business and make it a no-brainer for them to work with you to actually implement the tips that you're giving them. You also have to be willing to be a little bit wrong. I might have been dead wrong about some of the suggestions that I have provided to them, but it's, the goal is really just to kind of start a conversation and to spark enough interest for them to want to take that relationship further. All right, guys, I hope you found that really helpful and you learned something about how to build a successful business online for your own digital marketing marketing business and if you did make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time a new video goes live thank you so much for being here and as always keep creating the life you love